Hi everyone, my name is Melissa and today we're going to be talking about webhooks in Langflow. I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to get started with this component. Let's go. So I have my Langflow flow on the left and I have a terminal here on the right. First things first, we're going to just bring in the webhook component. And the webhook component itself is a very simple component. It exposes the endpoint to your Langflow. So this is my local Langflow right now, but we're going to focus on controls under the curl request here. And we have a post request that is pointing to the link flow webhook endpoint, as well as the flow ID. So when you send this post request, it's going to trigger the workflow that's happening in link flow. So I'm going to go ahead and send that here on the right. And once you see this message, that's how you know that the request has been successful. But let's see if the data has come through. So I'm going to go back into my link flow component here and inspect this webhook. And we see that any data has come through. So let's send another post request here with a little bit more data. Now we have a name, an email, a subject, and a body. So that has gone through successfully. And now let's inspect it once again. And we see that it's come through again in a JSON format, name, email, subject, and body. But how do I then pull out this information and use it for the rest of my flow? I need a parser component. So the parser component takes a data or a data frame. So I'm gonna hook this up. And then you also have to establish a template. The template is essentially just the fields from the payload that's coming in. So if you remember from the data, we want to pull out the name, the email, the subject, and the body. So to then put that in your template, you can use the actual names from the field itself. So I'm going to put in here webhook response. I'm going to put name. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to put name. And I'm going to do that for the rest of the fields that we see here that we're sending through as data. So email, subject, and body. Email, subject, and body. Perfect. So if I go ahead and send this through once again, and you should know that your request has successfully been sent once the inspect output uh, icon here has been highlighted. So now I can press this, and we see that we successfully got the data through. Okay, so we saw how we can trigger the workflow manually with some data that we made up. But how about data from the real world? I'm going to be showing this with a tool called Composio. So Composio is a tool that has integrations with hundreds of applications, but today we're going to be working with Gmail. Now there's definitely a lot of actions that I can perform with Gmail itself, like send emails or get emails. But what I want to focus on are the triggers. Now Composio has a trigger in here configured that Anytime a new Gmail message goes into my inbox, it sends a trigger, and then I can configure that trigger to then point to a specific trigger webhook URL. Now, what you're looking at here is a ngrok domain that I've pointed to my local link flow so that I can expose it, um, but you don't have to use ngrok. You can use render or any other services like that. So all you need to do is put in your URL here, and now it's pointing to the ngrok instance of my link flow. So essentially what should happen is that if I send myself an email, so let's do an example here. Let's do, hi YouTube. Yay, similar to the input earlier. And I press send. Then I should be able to go into my trigger logs in Composio and see that email come through. And then it should trigger the link flow flow itself. Okay, great. So we've seen that the trigger has come through, but let's just make sure that this is the correct one. Yep, we see subject line, hi YouTube, and body, yay. So now look at this payload that's coming through. It's a lot heftier than the one that we've sent earlier because this is real data that we're actually dealing with, and this is the type of payload that Composio sends. So depending on the provider, um, it doesn't have to be Composio, whether you're working with Twilio webhooks, GitHub webhooks, etc. Their payloads are going to look a little bit different as well, but this is the payload that Composio sends. And you see that the, the delivery was successful to our link flow flow. So let's go ahead and check if we actually got that. So I'm going to hop back into my link flow flow and I'm going to inspect the webhook component here. And we see that the payload is a lot bigger than the one in the past, right? So we have a ton more information that we wouldn't need. We probably only need to pull out again, the person that we're sending it to, the email, the body of the text and the subject. So I'm going to want to parse this information and only pull out the most important things that I need. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. So I have my webhook component again hooked up to this parser, but now the parser is just pulling out the payload field because that's all we're getting here from the webhook component. And now I will put it through this tool or this component here called structured output. Structured output is really helpful because 
I can then establish the specific fields that I want. So here I'm saying I want to pull out the sender. I want to put out, pull out the recipient, the body, the subject, etc. And I'm telling it to this component and the component itself is using an LLM to then understand the payload that's coming in and then process the information itself and extract the information that way. So I am using the structured component. It's using OpenAI as the LLM. And then I get back an output like this. So now I have a data frame that has just the information that I need that was parsed from that big payload that we saw earlier. And now I pull out the sender to the body. It says, yay. The subject says, hi, YouTube. Oops, I switched that. The subject that says, hi, YouTube. And then you see we have something here called sentiment and time. So it's actually analyzing the sentiment of the subject and the body of the email itself. But that just goes to show that now that I have my data from the webhook as a big payload, here's how I can parse it with the parser, and here's how I can chisel it down even more with structured output, and then I can use it for the rest of my flow. So I have this data frame now. I can also parse that data frame and stringify it and use it in other scenarios here in Langflow as well. So that was a quick example of how to get started with Langflow. We started with a simple example, and then we went into a bit of a real world example with Composio. I hope that you can start using webhook components in your Langflow flows. And as always, if you have any questions or would like to continue the discussion, join us on Discord. Thank you and happy coding.